from the Varki Foundation. It's old school. The skills that made us and how they're changing. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Nicholas Pearshow, and today we're looking at the hard skills that power innovation and inspiration. My guest today is an automotive systems teacher from Rome whose passion for design has inspired his students to invent practical solutions to everyday problems. Now that includes everything from building robots to pick up trash to inventing safer motorcycle helmets. Uh, today he teaches at Enrico Fermi Industrial Technical Institute in Rome, and his work has also been recognized internationally with uh, several Best Teacher Awards and a Top Teacher Lifetime Achievement Award. I am delighted to introduce Leonardo Durante. Leonardo, you are known for teaching students to come up with creative solutions to practical problems. How do you and your students come up with these ideas? How do you approach the design phase? The process of creation arises precisely from the problems, from the needs that we have every day. Uh, as you know, um, I'm a motorcyclist uh, myself, and I think safety is important. In this way, uh, we uh, made the helmet many years ago for increase the safety. Uh, also, the shopping cart. We made the shopping cart because we always um, saw the people that are struggling uh, their, to carry their daily shopping. When we start a problem, we always start from a, a, brainstorming, a brainstorming, see the needs and try to find new solutions. Um, I teach robotics. In this way, my uh, project are always very technology. From the idea, slowly, with a closer to the construction of a new prototype, um, sometimes um, it takes us a very long time because uh, it's not uh, always uh, easy to try uh, a, um, a low expensive way to, to make this kind of prototype. And um, this process is uh, good for us because uh, I always generally, generally divide the task with just a little, uh, little piece uh, from everyone. Um, as like a startup, there is a CEO, there is a very managers from production, marketing, communication, uh, human resources, uh, and so on. Just like a real, uh, real company. So you, you described it as a company, and we were talking before the recording started about this collaborative process. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Do all of your students have a say in which project gets taken up? Uh, the process is, is not very uh, easy to, to start because uh, um, they always uh, want to uh, create uh, something as very, uh, very strange. For, us, for, for example, a teletransport, <laughs> they're always very innovative, uh, but you know, it's not always so easy to uh, try to to make new invention. You are a big believer in learning by doing, in making things with your hands. And I guess one of the things that makes your work so special is that you encourage big ideas and creativity, but you also ensure that your students know what it takes to put the, bring these ideas into the real world. Can you talk about why making things with your hands is such an important process? I'm a, a, a very a strong supporter of this method because students uh, learn much, much more easily uh, than a frontal lesson. Uh, when I presented them uh, concrete problems and situation, uh, we uh, start and uh, uh, after a couple of weeks, they finished everything. For example, uh, I'm a also a supporter of Akaton. Akaton uh, um, is a, a very new kind uh, challenger and uh, very creative innovation. Uh, just a couple of weeks, we made an Akaton with other students from Spain and they were uh, very uh, all creative and in, uh, innovative. Uh, this is my keyword, yes, innovation. Uh, if you leave the students free to create, I'm sure they will study it much more effective than the traditional lessons. 
And is it very different to the way that you were taught when you were at school? Was creativity and innovation and doing things with your hands encouraged when when you were at school? Or is this sort of a a new generation of, of teachers doing it in a slightly different way? I think that a new generation can create the future that uh, uh, we we haven't now. And uh, innovation, uh, hackathon, or, or learning by doing methods, I think that is very key. Uh, it's the key for uh, try to invent a new future. And uh, how you talked about the the inventions that you and your class have produced over the years, from motorcycle helmets to shopping trolleys, and you talked about apps as well. Uh, how has the technology changed? over the years? Are you looking more at digital technology now? Is it more about how you operationalize smartphones and other kind of forms of technology? Uh, how are the skills that you need changing as the tech changes? Uh, technology, uh, as you know, uh, change uh, every day. Uh, change for, for me, of course, for my, uh, for my methods, and change for, for my students too. Uh, I think that uh, uh, when I um, I say to my student, yes, you can use your mobile phone uh, for a study, for research, uh, for your uh, gamification, for your simulation, is a very good way for uh, uh, for use the kind of device in a, a very innovative way. But uh, I uh, I think that. Uh, is not always in this way. Uh, the key word is innovation. Uh, consequently, uh, in myself, in my uh, job, I have to inno uh, innovation too. Uh, when I try to explain in my podcast, in my social, uh, how we can uh, use uh, our technology, uh, my students always uh, ask to me, uh, teacher, uh, but uh, there is a very lot of information. Um, this is a problem for my students and also for, for us, for the teachers, because uh, uh, it's not very easy to try to understand this a very huge uh, amount of, the, of information. So our uh, devices, uh, can uh, um, can help us also for uh, uh, this kind of trouble. How are you going about preparing your students for the world of work? I mean, I know that many of your students have gone on to pursue work in the sciences as well as electronics and automations and telecoms. What are the skills that they're learning in your classroom that let them go on to excel in these fields? The methodology, as we say, the learning by doing uh, prepays my students uh, uh, a lot for the world of work. Uh, when I divide in the their and the, the tax, is always as like a company. Uh, as you know, in a, in an industry industry, uh, there is always a, re a human resource that uh, uh, asks to us uh, how we can do for for uh, this kind of uh, of industry. In uh, this way, I think that uh, learning by doing kind of helps for prepare the students for the real world. Uh, many uh, prestigious telecommunication research and photonic companies uh, have uh, hired my students. If you uh, study in a different way, uh, using your brain, using uh, your brain for solve the problem, uh, I said that. Uh, you can find a very good job. And it's interesting because you're not just teaching your students about the practical skills, you're also teaching them creativity, innovation, teamwork, those higher order skills, which we find are more and more in demand with employers. Is that something you think is important as well? Um, when I say to you, I love hackathons. There are challenges that uh, uh, the students are forced to design, build a solution uh, just in a couple of days. Uh, they're very stimulating and exciting uh, uh, challenger. In, in this challenger, you can win money uh, or other prizes, uh, such as high-level courses. 
Hackathons are often reserved for adults, college students. And uh, it's like a bit, uh, uh, but, but uh, uh, it's, la uh, it's a bit like uh, a real life. You never know what the future holds for you. It's up to you to solve the problem and uh, no one else. That's why my students grow up so well and so fast. What was it about hackathons that attracted you? Did you discover them as a student yourself? Or was it something that as a teacher you came across and you thought, this is perfect, this will teach my students how to compete internationally? Uh, I discovered Hackathon um, many years ago. Uh, unluckily, uh, I'm not a student, but uh, I'm a teacher. And uh, I think that Hackathon is a very good way for uh, start a new kind of process in your mind because you are always very few time for uh, create for a project uh, a, a new uh, solution from the real life and i think it's a very good method and what what makes teams succeed in hackathons because it's not just the skills right it's about how you work together as a team how do you teach students to succeed in a hackathon? That's a really interesting question I hadn't thought about before. Um, I, I'm trying every day to make uh, an hackathon. Uh, when, um, when I teach uh, at school, uh, I'm trying to, uh, uh, I don't know how, how I can say to you, uh, if uh, uh, we have, uh, for example, a problem, uh, I have to connect uh, my domotic house with uh, Arduino Cloud, for example. So uh, I teach in a very simple way, and uh, I give, uh, give uh, uh, to my students just a couple of hours for say, okay, this is the problem. You have everything that you want, resources, devices, uh, uh, for uh, try a new kind of a solution. This is a very this is the old solution. Okay, it's work, but you have to try a new kind of solution. This is a very creative way, I suppose. Is it difficult to get students to think differently about problems? Do they all do they all always want to do the same thing and you have to encourage them to to break the rules? How do you, how do you do that? No, it's not difficult. Uh, the students, the, uh, the young people uh, are very creative and uh, especially in technology. And uh, sometimes uh, proposed to me uh, a new kind of solution that uh, I never uh, think to um, put in uh, that project. <laughs> You are a, you know, you're a technologist, you love robotics and in finding, if this is right, technical solutions to practical challenges. Uh, there's so much new technology around now. I wanted to get your expert opinion. What do you think is going to make the biggest difference to our lives over the next five, 10 years? Do you think robotics is going to make a big leap forward? Do you think it's going to be artificial intelligence? I know this is a big question, but since I had you on the show, I, I had to ask because I'm really fascinated by this. Uh, I'm not a magician. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I don't know uh, how uh, that will happen in a, in a few years. Uh, I, I, th uh, I think that, uh, for example, artificial intelligence can uh, help us to solve many kind of problems. When, when I was young, um, and uh, um, some, somebody uh, create, make uh, the calculator, you know, a very hot calculator. And uh, my mathematics math teacher say, please don't use a calculator. Of course, everybody use calculator, but calculator is not the, uh, uh, the solution for every problem. In this way, also, for example, artificial intelligence can help us to solve the problems, but not uh, every problem. Problems. Uh, we have a, uh, a brain. We are creative. 
more the artificial intelligence uh, I propose. That's an interesting point because the new generation of chatbots can provide us with instantaneous I information. Encourage, I encourage ideas. him to use it. Yeah. I encourage him to, to use it. Yeah. If, ah, so you wouldn't, if, so you wouldn't uh, because some, some teachers say like we should ban them completely in school. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. If, uh, if you have a problem, if you have to make a code for uh, solve uh, an app, you can use uh, chat GPT, of course, but uh, you have to understand wherever you want, wherever you study in, this, in that moment. You can copy the code. Why not? But uh, do you understand it? If you understand it, okay. That's that's an interesting point because some people look again. I'm I'm perhaps taking the most uh, absurd part of this argument, but some people are now saying, "What's the point of learning to code or learning to come up with new ideas?" Because I can just ask this artificial intelligence, and it will provide me with the code perfectly. Do do students now really need to learn to to code and to do all of these? hard things is that still going to be important in the next generation yes i think that is very important for a, a new generation use this kind of metals uh, is not uh, uh, we can't uh, limited uh, the methods for uh, for teach uh, i think that uh, also intelligent is uh, intelligent artificial can help us our work yeah because it's, I think the one thing about AI is that it's easy. It's too easy. And sometimes it, it seems to me that the point of teaching is to challenge students, that actually you learn by doing, but also by failing and by struggling with issues and ideas. And uh, that failure and struggle can be the greatest teacher of all. And if we, can simply ask a, a, a chatbot and it comes up with an instantaneous answer. We don't learn anything. So actually the process of struggling, of coming to grips with an idea and making it work, that that I, I wonder, is that for you the whole point? Or am I yes, sort of missing something? Yes, if you uh, but if you uh, uh, write something to chat GPT, you have to uh, uh, ask in a uh, uh, the the question and uh, the right question. So it's not very easy to use chat GPT or AI. If you have any problems, if you need some parts of codes, you have to write in uh, um, also in a creative way to solve the, your problem. So I think that uh, can help. Yeah. yeah. Um, you must uh, look back and, and think of all the things that you've built with your students. Is there a, a favorite? project that you worked on you know the, the from the motorcycle helmet to the robot that picked up trash to the shopping cart for the elderly and disabled people was there a particular project that you look back and you think that was my my favorite uh project no the next one the next one <laughs> that's a that's a very engineering answer there's always the next there's always the next one <laughs> the next one yes <laughs> uh... We we'll see. Uh, this is the uh, the uh, um, the when I when I teach, I don't know uh, uh, where I teach next uh, the next day. So uh, help me to teach in a, a very happy way. It's not uh, uh, noise. Uh, stay in the class with me. <laughs> I'm just a little crazy. <laughs> but that's that's nice waking up and having a new challenge every day and a new idea. That must be very invigorating. Is that something that you'd recommend to other teachers who might be listening to think of new it's ideas? It's not easy. Your, it's not yeah. easy because uh, you have to spend a lot of time of your uh, also when uh, you stay at home for uh, try to create uh, also a new or kind of innovation is not easy. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I uh, sleep uh, uh, very few hours every day. 
and uh, so I have enough time for a creator. <laughs> One of the great challenges we've had over the last couple of years was, of course, COVID-19. And I, I think that affected all of education, but I think it particularly affected teachers who worked uh, in vocational education and in you know, teaching technology, because it required, those are subjects that require students to literally come into a workshop and pick things apart. What, what Can you talk a little bit about the impact that it had on you and your students? Uh, COVID-19 uh, was really difficult for us because uh, um, it can't permit to work uh, in a laboratory. But uh, I'm, um, I'm prepared for this because uh, I use uh, many times uh, software for simulated this kind of process. So it's not the, the same way, of course, because uh, we can't create for a couple of years. But uh, um, th that time, uh, it was really um, uh, interesting for us because uh, we create uh, uh, many apps and uh, we create, uh, uh, we're so, we solve many hackathons online. Also, when uh, my students uh, stay sick. Yes, yes, COVID help us. That's an interesting perspective. So you were able to keep going because you could shift a lot of this work online. And uh, what, what kind of apps were you producing? Was it stuff particularly to do with the pandemic to address social problems during the pandemic or was it more general applications no we made uh, an application for uh, solve the um, uh, a process for uh, locate the column or for recharge the cars uh, we made an hackathon and we won the hackathon <laughs> It's amazing, no, that, that, that's, uh, you must have been incredibly proud, a particularly difficult moment for you and your students. Um, they, they, uh, they were happy uh, also in the COVID time because uh, we create uh, um, every day and uh, we spent our time in a, in a very happy way, yeah, also in COVID time. I was alone here. And uh, every day I stay with my students, with my laptop, every day, every day. You've used this word again and again and again in our conversation. And I've spoken to, to so many experts and teachers in the world of education, and I so rarely hear it. But the word you use is, is create. And that seems to be so fundamental to the work that you do, that you come in and you, you create something, something new that didn't exist before the day started and that must be uh it must be a wonderful feeling to walk away at the end of the project thinking we had this idea we built it and now it's gone out into the world and it's changing it's changing lives can you talk a little bit about the impact that your projects have had on the students and on your community the impact is very deep was really deep uh, because uh, we um, we present uh, we show this kind of app of a project in a manifestation or a workshop uh, and uh, put my uh, students in this kind of uh, workshop and uh, they were uh, the only students and the other was a researcher an adult a CEO project manager uh they um uh facilitate the the grow up of the students also the for example the shopping cart we won uh, three competition also for uh, uh for the spot so can we make uh, uh, we, we, we that we made and uh, we put on a youtube channel uh, and uh, when uh, we uh show the shopping card and manifestation the <laughs> ladies uh, and uh, the um, the other adults uh, asked to us uh, please 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 can i buy it <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's a perfect solution for uh, carrying my uh, my shop every day 
and also for the helmet for the when now uh, when we when we made the 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 helmet uh, many people asked to us can i buy it uh, but uh, uh, my students was was don't want to buy it, don't, don't want to sell it uh, because yeah uh, it's like a creature you you don't want to separate it <laughs> <laughs> But you've given them ownership of an idea and inspiration uh, to create, and that's absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm conscious of of your time, and I'm very grateful to you for talking to me today. Um, thank you, uh, Leonardo. Thank, thank you, you so much for for coming on the show, and uh, I'm looking forward to you know as we continue to connect in, in the next few weeks, hearing more about your work. But Leonardo, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thank you, Nicolas, for inviting me. Thank you to everybody for the time that you spent with uh, with us. Uh, just uh, um, one word, uh, please be innovative. Always. Yeah. Be innovative. That's a wonderful uh, sentiment to, to end the show with. Leonardo, thank you very much for, for joining us today. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning into this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave us a great review uh, wherever you've heard it. And please join us next week for another fantastic discussion. Uh, Leonardo, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.